the Texas. And six years can't turn free! Woo! Alright, enough of that. Yes! I am six years cancer free! August 16th, 2016, I rang the bell at Texas Children's Hospital, officially declaring me free forever from the tyranny of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I was diagnosed when I was seven and I was free when I was nine. Now, how old am I? 15? Yeah, I'm 15! Woo! I am so grateful that I made it out of that hellhole alive. And before you say you shouldn't be swearing, this is my day. I can do whatever the heck I want. So frick you! Wait. And you'd think that going through two and a half years of, tr of cancer treatment would be hell on earth. And yeah, it was. But I also have a lot of good memories from that time. And just a lot of happy things. So I want to share some stories with you guys because you might get a kick out of them. Also trigger warning because there's going to be mentions of like blood, needles, and all that, all that fun cancer stuff. So if you're sensitive to that, then go ahead and leave. But thank you for at least sticking through the beginning. This is my favorite cancer story to tell. And the fact that I say that makes me question my mental sanity. But, um... The first time, when I was first diagnosed, I was in a hospital in San Diego. Yes, it was San Diego, California. And they had to give me some medication through my IV that they had given me that would make, I don't know what the point of it was for, but it would, a side effects was hallucinating, halluc, hallucinating and hearing things that weren't there. I know that has a word, but I don't know what it is. I was seven at the time, and this was two in the morning. I was loopy and tired, and I didn't know what the heck was going on. This, I had been in the hospital for like two days at this point, so I, I knew loosely what was going on, but I just didn't even care anymore. I was just kind of dealing with it. And in my weird seven-year-old loopy tired mind, I asked my mother to show me a picture of a squirrel. So she did so, and I was all happy. And then a few minutes later, I said, you know, we should give him a name. I don't know why I wanted to give him a name. I just did. And my mom said, yeah, we should name him Prickle Pants. And I responded, yeah, let's name him Prickle Pants. Then I fell asleep. Then the next morning, I woke up. I was in a different hospital room because I'm not making this up. I was getting too many visitors. I have a lot of family friends in California and just a lot of family and friends in general. So a lot of people were coming to visit me and even people who were from Texas who wanted to visit me, which thank you guys so much. So I'm awake, I'm eating breakfast and I asked my mom to show me the picture of Prickle Pants. And she says, oh sure. And she pulls up a picture of Prickle Pants from the movie Toy Story 3. And I say, no, mom, the picture of Prickle Pants. And she shows me another. And I'm like, no, Prickle Pants, you know, Prickle Pants. And she asks me, what are you talking about? And I said, the picture of the squirrel last night, we named him Prickle Pants, don't you remember? I'm pretty sure you can tell where the story's gonna go from here. She started dying laughing and told me that I had hallucinated, or at least heard that conversation and we didn't actually have it. Cause the squirrel, the picture of the squirrel was real. She did show it to me, but we never named him Prickle Pants together. So I don't know where that came from, but it did. And I just thought it was funny. Also, here's the picture of the squirrel if you wanted to see it. That squirrel is forever known in my heart as Prickle Pants. No, I didn't. That squirrel's probably dead, but still. I actually got to meet my all-time hero when I was eight years old because of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, even though it, it's a weird story. My original plan for Make-A-Wish was to meet Alex Hirsch, who was the creator of Gravity Falls, and who's, who's gone on to work on things like Inside Job, Mitchells vs. the Machines. Yeah, but I ultimately decided to go to Give Kids the World. I'm not going to get into that because it was a long thing. If you want to look it up and maybe donate, I'll leave a link in the description because they're a really good organization. And we had plans to leave for Disney World sometime, but my mother found out that there was going to be a Comic-Con in Houston that had Alex Hirsch in it. And my mom begged and pleaded with the people at the Make-A-Wish Foundation to move the flight to a different date so I could go meet him. And they said, no, we can't do that. It's already set in stone, but if something comes up, we can do that. And something came up and they were able to switch the flight tickets. So my mom told me that I was gonna meet Alex Hirsch in all his red hair, red plaid glory, and I was going ape shit. The day of the Comic-Con arrived and we were waiting in the lobby to get our rooms. And I was waiting in a wheelchair and I was just playing with my little Barbie doll. When all of a sudden, my mom grabs my arm, yanks me up and says, get up, get up, get up. And <clears throat> she says, Mr. Alex Hirsch, and right in front of me, was Alex Hirsch. If you don't believe me, here's a photo. And Alex Hirsch, bless his heart, patiently sat with me for like two hours to answer all of my questions about Gravity Falls. And to this day, I'm so grateful for that because when he was walking, he looked kind of grumpy. And I, 
he was probably gonna go get some food, and I don't know, but I'm just so grateful that he sat with me for like two hours to talk with me. And somehow, the word had gotten out about my story how much I wanted to meet Alex Hirsch, and one of the con staff got in contact with us and arranged for us to have dinner together. My family, that member of the con staff, and Alex Hirsch. I was losing my mind. We took the bus to the restaurant, we ate, we had a grand old time. We took the bus back, and then we got into our rooms, and it just felt so surreal, like it didn't even happen. To this day, it's it's honestly the best day of my life. The next day, I got to t chat with him again at the Comic-Con, then the next day, and then when we said goodbye, I just felt so dumbfounded that I had spent three days with Alex Hirsch just talking with him and just having fun with him. And he gave me a lot of merchandise that he actually signed. I will try to find some. It's been a while. And if you have a question about the beaver page, I had had this mini theory when I was like six that Seuss was secretly part beaver because of course I did. And when I asked him about it, he said, yeah, we had plans for him to originally be like the king of the beavers, but then Grunkle Stan called him up like, well, come work at the mystery shack. And then he said, fine, okay, goodbye beavers. And it wasn't until years later when I actually thought about it that it came to me that he probably made that up just to make me smile. And even if he did, I'm still really grateful for that because it's, it made me so happy to be right about something and just to have a mini contribution that no one else would know about to the fandom. Yeah, and I doubt it's right, but if it is, and you're watching this, thank you so much, Alex Hirsch. That made me so happy. As for the messages that he wrote in this, for the Mabel drawing, he wrote, Lily, you're irresistible. Love your butterflies. For the Wendy drawing, I had told him that Wendy was my favorite character, which was probably, she was probably my gay awakening anyways. Um, what's up, dude? You're my favorite character. And for the Sue's drawing, he he had a beaver and said, my brother. Then Grunkle stand on the next page saying, Cyrus, get back to work. I'm sorry, I just, I just, this, this makes me so happy that having cancer made me have this incredible opportunity to meet my greatest hero of all time. And I'm... I'm not at all thanking cancer for that. I don't, they don't, it, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but I don't give credit to what my body did to me in order to get to where I was to meet someone who I had idolized for so long, and I still do. I had been to the hospital multiple times over my course of cancer, even for little things like fevers, because that could have deadly consequences if you have leukemia. So I was pretty much in and, the, in and out of the hospital like at least five times over the course of two and a half years for a fever. And during some of those times, characters, like fictional characters, would come to visit me. When I was at the hospital the first time, when I was first diagnosed, Elsa, um, freaking Spider-Man, and some famous football guy came to visit me. Not me specifically, like everyone on the ward, but still, I don't remember the name of the football player, it's not important. I'm sure my dad does, but... We don't talk about my dad! No, 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 no. We don't talk about... My dad! It's a long story. Something that happened to me the last like four to five months of treatment was that my port was harder to access than usual. Because usually they just have to kind of, I mean, it would hurt like yuck, but it still hurt. But for some reason they had to like, and then get it. We don't really know why that happened, but it did. And let me tell you, the pain was un -king bearable as a little eight-year-old. My IV scar, where'd it go? It's very tiny and very unnoticeable, but, oh shoot, I gotta like, mm, shoot, hold on, is it? Yes, it's this thing right here, yeah. One night we had to go to the hospital, most likely for a fever, and um, it was the night that um, Weird Mageddon Part 2 was airing, and the, I vividly remember telling my mom, you know what the worst part about being at the hospital tonight is? I have to miss the new episode of Gravity Falls. And she posted that on Facebook. I just think that was really sweet. It just shows how much Gravity Falls changed my life.
This video is turning into more of a memoir about Gravity Falls than my cancer. While going through treatment, I had to skip the entirety of second grade because if someone so much as sneezed on me, I had to be rushed to the hospital. So we figured it would be best to stay and like do a mini homeschool kind of thing. There would be a teacher that would come from my school every day and do like an hour little lesson of all the things that we learned in my class that specific day. And if that teacher is watching this, thank you so much. I'm so sorry we had to put you through that, but you were really nice and thank you so much. Something that we did do as a, like a little mini kind of party thing is that me and a bunch of friends from my class who I had the two previous years would go to, um, I believe one of, the, one of our local malls, we would go to American Girl and they had this huge party room that was just always set up for us for some reason. And we would just always eat. They gave us this massive, like I'm not even joking, two foot long ice cream sundae and we just all gorged on it together and it was really fun. And then we would always just kind of walk around the mall afterwards and then there was one specific time when we went to see How to Train Your Dragon True 2. And I believe that was the first movie that ever made me cry. But that honor might go to Finding Dory. It's one of the two. Actually no, it might be home. And it was always just like a mini celebration where I could get together with my friends, just kind of let go for the day. And one thing that happened on one of our trips was um, a woman who worked at a Chick-fil-A there, she saw that I was in a wheelchair and she asked me if I wanted the sundae and she gave it to us for free. And that was fun. I liked that. I don't eat at Chick-fil-A anymore because I'm a vegetarian and also they don't they don't like those. They don't like us homosexuals. So yeah. But still, thank you, lady. I have a lot more cancer stories that I might tell in the future because there's a lot of interesting ones. But um, this video is kind of getting too long and um, I'm going to start to cry soon because trauma. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and thank just thank you guys for being here, being here with me on this incredible journey that has been in my life even though most of you guys didn't know i existed even before i had cancer um but yeah thank you guys so much i'm so grateful for all of you um yeah just thank you so much have a good day goodbye